So hello. Hello, I'm back. Hi, we're back. Okay. So of course, <laughs> listening audience, I stopped recording. And really, when I should just talk to my guests after, I should learn to just keep a recording anyway, because you never know what amazing stuff pops up. And now yeah. we're hearing the gay baker's secret. And it is apparently nursery rhymes. So please share your secret of games and nursery rhymes with everybody, because I'm sure they're going to love it. Okay. What's your daughter's favorite nursery rhyme? Uh, my daughter's favorite nursery rhyme is, uh, gosh, that's a tough one. Or to yours know. or anyone okay. that you can remember. You know, no, yes. Uh, my daughter's favorite nursery rhyme is, we'll say, uh, Little Miss Muffet. Okay. Awesome. So Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and came down the cider and frightened Miss Muffet away. All right. Here you have everything you need for a role-playing game. You have a character in motion in a setting where that's dynamic. Um, and I tell you, I could tell that nursery rhyme for two hours without, I, I, that's all you need. Everybody knows nursery rhymes. That's your cue. Once upon a time, there was a young lady whose last name was Muffet. I don't know why, it's a family name, you know, and you just spin it out. You know, this is great on car trips. This is great on bus trips for kids, you know, for kids going on a long bus trip. It's great to do them as ad libs, you know. But it, when we think about the effort to go into a role playing game, when a teacher thinks about like, oh God, I've got to think of this forever. It's just a nursery rhyme, you know, and then you embroider and you embroider and you embroider and it is a skill and it does take learning. And for a kid trying to figure that out, like how do I unpack this? I don't know. It's, spider you know does miss muffet she's sitting on a tuffet what the heck is a tuffet is it a tuffet of grass is it a silken tuffet in a palace uh is it a tuffet made of i don't know the helms of her fallen enemies you know fig you, you you can just start unpacking and unpacking and a spider is it a friendly spider that's going to help her is it a giant spider is she in danger from the spider she's scared obviously uh, and it just goes and goes like I've taught like um, the tale of the uh, three blind mice, you know, when it was like the, the three old blind blues brothers and they they were telling the young ones coming up about how bad it was in the kitchen back in the day. You know, it was for like ever, you know, so you can do this so easy. So this is the secret at the back of, of my game, A Thousand One Nights, when I talk about how to how to tell a story and how to find a story, you need a character in motion in a in a setting that's dynamic that's all you need it does not have to be like you don't have to think of all the details you don't have to like plan out all the things if that's your thing cool do that but if you're if you're just trying to be like what's a, what do i do to tell a story pick any nursery rhyme and literally actually i've watched people like say, oh, that's going to be way too short. I'm going to go with this song I know instead because that gives me to work more work with. And it's too much. You know, Tom, Tom, the Piper son grabbed a pig and away he run. Okay. At the walls of the city, there's a scoundrel fleeing across the desert with a pig tucked under his arm. Why does he have a pig? I don't know. What's the pig's name? You know, and then you're on and going and it's, it, it is a skill. It does take time, but this is also a way that you can teach your students how to do this, that they don't have to be afraid to imagine things, that they don't have to be afraid to think about what, where do all those words point? You know, little Miss Muffet, how small was she? You know, was she tiny? Is it, is she like two inches tall? I also so, love the inquiry all these ideas. In this. There's so much inquiry based learning right there. Like mm -hmm. you could almost do so much of a, a project based learning lesson or a problem based learning lesson, mm -hmm. like literally from let's take a nursery rhyme and actually expand and explain what one is. That is yeah. genius. I'm yeah. Gonna try that out. Like now. What do we do? What if we, what if we made little Miss Muffet a physics experiment? You know, all right. All right. How small is she? We want to know. And the spider coming down at what rate on the, the what's the tensile strength of the web? Is it going to be a problem? Can she grab the spider and swing across to where, you know, just, just go for it. It's, uh, but that's a good way that, you know, project-based learning and that way for kids who, you know, it's so goofy to introduce this to a bunch of, you know, eighth graders, you know, seventh or eighth or ninth graders who are like a little bit in that like jaded space. And they're like, oh, really? Like, I'm like, no, seriously, it's a nursery rhyme. 
just go with it. It's not, you don't have to do it forever. Here's a nursery rhyme. We're going to do five minutes of nursery rhyme ridiculousness. I, I, I love that, love so, that much. so much. Yeah. yeah so uh, uh, that, that, that's, that's the end of it, the end now. Of it now. Okay. Um, until, until next time. time. Until next time. And I got you on Fair to Beat next time. Uh, I don't, I'm going to try to put your, I might fast track your interview because <laughs> it was. Well, so it's such a beginning one. I wound up having one uh, a week ago with uh, Ron Edwards uh, because one of the other things I want to talk about is when you're playing with teenagers, lines and veils or having this concept of things to talk about, I think is a great idea uh, because I played with students and we played a game of uh, like I ran with a whole class a great Gatsby game. Oh, fantastic. And it was fantastic, but you did have to have these like, we're gonna, things are gonna come up in this that we're might be agree. hard and we need to have lines and veils. And I thought it was so important. And then I realized from it and actually Ron was so surprised by it. He's another one who wants to come on again. So that's actually three. Well, that's super unsurprising because Ron is a professor and wants to have, you know, right. that's what he does. Right, yeah. uh, but, but, but it came out to a, you know, but it was so great to like have that conversation, but I, I loved it, but I kind of want to move that later on yeah. when in these first few episodes, I really do want this, which is how do we get people into this? Because my goal, my goal with this podcast and everything is I want there to be more embracing of gaming as a thing. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's not too expensive. That's accessible no. to everybody that you can do in five minutes right. or for five years, whatever. It's not a big deal. And especially what I'm hearing from you is that looking at serving two audiences of how do I bring my fellow educators along with me on this, you know, this mm -hmm. like, we can just do it journey and how do we give them the tools to bring the students along and that that's exactly what i'm trying to do here with this uh i i bridge a gap between love and connections to a bunch of game designers uh and a bunch of teachers like yep. my next two guests are john miller edu who literally had a three-hour board game like day with teachers about pandemic and analyze pandemic and its use in like science and math and other things. Yeah. So, so he's coming on the show. And then I have a guy named John Corapo who does uh, great education stuff. He's invented a thing called iron chef, which is mm -hmm. like you create, you're basically explaining things like you would for an education lesson, but it's done in the sort of like an iron chef. It's um, fantastic. So like we have educators and game designers and I really want, and I'm, it, it saddens me so much that for some reason the two are like two separate fields and yeah, I'm working I, on making it yeah. one as much as yeah. I can. Did you go to living games? Can you get to living games? Living game for me to get anywhere at the moment. You is have hard. a kindergartner. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and the other thing is, is cost to get anywhere is hard. I hear that. I've been going to gaming. I've been able to go to, I've been doing, I do professional development on mm. games and education because i like i go at, i i'm a major at a history convention about microscope so it's like here microscope your timeline and i do that and then i also do microscope scenes with like literature classes so it's like we're going to take romeo and juliet and we're going to do all these scenes that are not in romeo and juliet but are <laughs> sides of romeo and juliet right well the one where tybalt is like could you please listen to me just exactly. please listen. Yeah. yeah so it's like that. or the other one i do is i actually take the microscope timeline game and i put it with the novel and yep. that's hilarious because you do that with like Romeo and Juliet and you get uh, act one, scene one, these families are arguing. That's the beginning. The end is Romeo and Juliet die. And all of a sudden it's like, what? You're not like, it's a famous book. Sorry. Yeah, I got we all know it. It's not spoilers. Right. Yeah. But then they all start reading and then they just give them the book or mm -hmm. the play. And I was like, just read it and add microscope cards wherever you want to it. Yeah. And suddenly they're arguing with the timelines and suddenly like one's like, all right. Act four, scene three, Juliet dies. And all these others are like, no, she doesn't die in act four, scene three. She dies in like act five, scene two. That's what she does. Like, no, no, she doesn't. The... Oh, she fakes it. Oh, this is crazy. And then they want to read the book. Like, yeah. it's a, like then they want to read it because they're like, this all this crazy stuff happens in this book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. yeah. So that's what I do mainly. I've been doing that's that for perfect. teachers because that way secretly I can get, and this part will never be on any podcast, but that way my district can pay for my travel to go <laughs> there and do it. That is, that's, that's, you know, that's the gig we all got to do is like how to make what we love. Right. Uh, make our lives possible. Exactly. You know? And my goal is since I am not a, I, I love playing all the games, but designing them myself is just not my favorite thing to do. Uh, yeah. I love playing in all your worlds and the different worlds of games. Uh, so I, my contribution, I'm hoping, is I can get people to listen to this. Uh, yeah. Educators and game designers. 
yeah. and anybody. Uh, and we can start, I, I want to create, the goal eventually is I want a handbook to give to teachers to mm -hmm. be like, hey, teachers, I think you should try games. Here is this. Right. And, uh, you know, it's like, because the real problem with them, I've noticed with teachers is if I give teachers the rules of microscope, the game, it's, excuse me, it's a hundred page book. Yeah. To be and like, it could be time. right. Yeah. It could be explained in two pages of here, do this, this, and this. And, yeah. you know, it's like what you mentioned to yours. I want to bring into the interview. We didn't have time, but a, a, a gradient of dice rolling instead of pass fail. It's, yeah. it's what I love most about the apocalypse world system. And I kind of yeah. want to throw it in there, but that is my favorite part about the system is yeah, that it has the, the gradient of the failure. Yep. Um, and well, and there's another key part to that. It's not just a gradient of failure, but especially playing with children. Um, another game to look for, please, please, please find the big night. I will um, add that to my list of things. The big, the big night is amazing. Um, you, you, know, you play toys, you're trying to rescue Santa Claus. It's hilarious. But one of the things that they get that um, Alan gets super right in that game is that if things go poorly, you narrate them for yourself. Because that, what I was talking about early where, earlier with the, that in terms of social dynamics, kids can really handle the creative work of, oh, that goes terrible bad for you. What happens? You know, they're like, oh, a giant rock falls down and it kills me. You know, they'll, they're good with that. It's the part where that goes terribly bad for you. A giant rock falls down and kills you. And they're like, oh, I don't like that. You know, yeah. so that's a part of the gradient piece is handing it to the player and saying it goes bad. How does it go bad? Oh, you know? I like that so much. I got to start doing that with my own daughter when I play games with her. It's huge. And yeah, it will huge. change everything for her because then she has more agency mm -hmm. of to say, and it allows it not to be frightening because I think so many people get afraid of failure. You know, we hammer that into them that failure is scary and failure is wrong and you're, you're going to fail and it's bad. And if we could, if we could switch our, whole culture dynamically to fail all the time, fail fast, fail working it. every time, you know, I know, right? Fail forward. Fail forward. I, yeah. I, by the way, I'm working on it because growth mindset is something, yep. uh, you know, Carol Dweck's book. And uh, yep. I will have set my pinnacle of success so I can get Carol Dweck on this show. Oh, uh, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Good luck with yeah. that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Trust me. My other goal was to get you on my show. So I've oh, already well, accomplished you, one. You know, you're you're on your way. I'm on my way. But uh but yes, uh no, that is it's changing that way. The it is, it and is, and that's the thing. Like I'm, when I said it was like, you know, it's still 1950s, but like it is changing. It's just the the grinding and the gears I see between new teachers, right. you know, teachers under 50 who want that so badly, <clears throat> and then school boards and school buildings and education structures that have not adapted yet. Yeah. And they're like, you know, like, no, no, you still need to go through all of English history and why it matters to America. We need to know that Martin Luther pinned some things to a door and the reformation happened. And I'm like, okay, it's relevant. Can we cover it in an hour? We do not need to spend four weeks on this when they're in seventh grade. They don't care. No, they don't they, care. Yeah. You know, they'll care sometime eventually, but you got to say, you got to be, it has to be awesome. He has to be a badass. He has to be like, and he hammered it on the door and he risked being excommunicated. And it was like a whole list of complaints. And then he went to prison, you know, cool, done, next, moving on. What do you want to talk about? You know, yeah. anyway. Yeah, we have another whole podcast right here. So I think I should stop now. Before yes, we actually okay, one. awesome. Um, get back I to me later. Back. I will get back. Yes, I will get back to you <laughs> later. I'm flattered you want to be back on my thing because uh, there is, this is, you know, there are so many podcasts about gaming and there are so many podcasts about education. Yeah. And I, I, I still don't, I've not found one that combines the two. I found yeah. a little bit here and there on like a board game post podcast. They'll yeah. be like, here are games for science. Yeah. Uh, but I'm still always at the basic point where, you know, why don't we, you know, that, that's why I wanted this first episode. Why don't we just do imagination? Yeah. You know, forget, forget anything. Let's just, can, can in every single setting you go through in history, can you put them in there? Instead Please. of just read a book, can you play in the book? Like, right. You know, I, I've done, I actually did use the rules once and I did kingdoms with Lord of the Flies. Oh my uh, gosh. Wow. Yeah. 
it was fun. Uh, you know, and they're wow. throwing each, they're throwing each other into volcanoes. And I'm like, yeah, this is great. And this is like, and it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, that's so, intense. yeah. So these are the things I'm trying to do. And the hard part for me, so you know, is I don't have my own classroom. Right. Um, I'm a teacher on special assignment in technology now. Right. So I teach all the teachers how to use tech. And here I am being like, but my passion actually doesn't involve any tech whatsoever. I just happen to be good at all this stuff. It happens to really just involve like, talking and collaboration yeah so yeah, uh, yeah. that's why i'm working to figure out what the next oh, way is, to do that to adapt that to role to role playing would be shared google docs which yeah, we, we do that. in you know the baker house larp yeah. you know share shared google docs for world building and you know different colors for different commentary and like whoa you know all this whatever yeah, oh, we, we have that going don't worry i had a feeling you did yeah all right <laughs> thank you so much Miguel. Cool. i have to get all back right. to my own child talk and more later talk more later Bye-bye.